So we're going to be looking at force problems. It's still Newton's second law, but now we've got more than one mass and they have to be connected together. Okay? So that, that's kind of a stipulation for how this is going to work. There's two masses on an, ob on an object or connected to an object. So the things like pulleys, so we can allow for rotation and movement, they have no mass, so we're just going to ignore the mass and the friction associated with them. Okay? This is an introduction to, to how Newton's second law works for objects that are connected with uh, a string and more masses that are connected with a string together. So two types of kind of machines, Atwood machines, where you've got two objects on one on either side of a pulley. So you can kind of imagine that almost as a balance. If they're different masses, one's going to go up, one's going to go down. And then Fletcher's trolley, where you know when you let go of this mass, it's going to move down, and this object's going to be moved across the surface. So there's just a couple little notes first, and then we'll look through an, an explanation for them. So just take a minute and get those notes down. So the biggest thing we do with these questions, like all the questions, is label everything. Label all the forces. Label direction. And direction is going to work a little bit differently than last time. So if you label all your forces in, each object has a mass, okay? mass 1, mass 2. Each object has a force, force of gravity 1, force of gravity 2. Both forces of gravity are downward, yet if you're holding these two masses and let go, one mass is going to move up and one's going to move down. So the direction isn't so much about up and down as it is how it's going to make the pulley rotate. So if, if the red one, force 2, is larger than force 1, the red ball will go down, the blue mass will go up. So it's like there's a rotation around the pulley clockwise. Switch that, and if mass 1 is larger, then mass two, it'll rotate counterclockwise. So the positive and negative is more about uh, how it would, would rotate than it would um, <laughs> just up or down. And that might take us a little bit to get used to, and that's all right. So you don't have to draw this next part, but here's an easy way to kind of picture the problem. Rather than two forces pulling down, think of it as a tug of war between the two forces horizontally. So there's not even a pulley in this case. It's just two masses connected by a string. Force of gravity one is like a person pulling to the left. Force of gravity two is like another person pulling to the right. So that becomes a one-dimensional problem that we've been working with, and there's no rotation to worry about. It's just left or right, and the arrows are pointing in the appropriate directions. Okay? Any arrow that points to the right is positive. Any arrow that points to the left is negative. So this might be an easier way of picturing the problem in terms of direction, positive and negative. So just to help visualize it, there's a little online simulation. And I put a link to this into the my teacher page under a web link. Here I've got, we've got two objects, a red square and a blue square. They both have a mass of four kilograms. So when I hit the play button, what happens? Nothing happens at all. They don't move. Everything's in balance. So that can be seen on the, in the diagram at the right. The two green arrows are force of gravity. The blue arrows are your force of tension. So force of tension along the string is always going to be the same no matter where you are. You can't have a string that has a greater force of tension in one end and a, different, a less force of tension in the other end if they're connected and all that's acting on them is gravity and there's nothing else going on. So if you could kind of feel the force of tension anywhere along the string, it's the same. So these two blue arrows will always show you the same number. But the force of gravities can be different. So if I increase the mass a little bit, so the blue, the blue mass is 5 kilograms, the red one's 4. So now when I hit play and they begin to accelerate, do you think the acceleration is 9.81? Do you think it's quite small or do you think it's somewhere in the middle? Any guesses? Think to yourself what it is. Uh, the other thing, too, just ignore the yellow line called the normal. We don't kind of discuss that as it applied to these questions. So the green arrow from the blue mass is greater than that of the red. And so when I hit go, there's an acceleration, but it's fairly small, right? kind of expected. They're very close to being in balanced. So when it goes, the acceleration is 1.09 meters per second squared. So it's quite, quite low. That should make sense. It's they're, they're balanced together. If you 
if you put your hand underneath this blue one, you wouldn't feel its full weight because of the, the counterweight on the other side. Let's increase the mass a little bit. Now it's 8 kilograms. The blue mass is 8 kilograms. The red mass is 4. So the acceleration is going to be the blue one is going to move down. Any guesses for this one? Is it 9.81? Is it low, like 1 again, or somewhere in the middle? So my guess, if I were doing this for the first time, if one mass is twice the other, my guess would be 4.9, half of 9.8. And it's not 4.9. It's greater than it was. It's 3.27, which is about one-third the force of gravity, or the acceleration of gravity. So twice the mass is one-third the acceleration of gravity. So there's something weird going on with the math, and that's what we're going to be looking at shortly. And if you make it the largest possible difference, right, this is when you get a situation where the acceleration is, is close to 9.81. You can't have an acceleration greater than 9.81 meters per second squared. And if you've done that, you've broken Earth physics, which some of you do regularly on tests, but you try to anyway. So keep that in mind. If you do a calculation for these and you get something like 15 meters per second squared as your acceleration, something went wrong somewhere. Let's go back to a little example, and I'll give you a second to copy it down. So as with pretty much any question, if you're not given a diagram, draw one. I'll try to always give you one. Once you have it, label in your forces. So mass one has force of gravity one. Mass two has force of gravity two. Now I'm not, I'm not trying to make the arrows represent the forces, right? The, the force vector for mass two should be twice the size of mass one. That's not what's important. The direction is what's important for us. Coming up from each mass is a force of tension. Call it force of tension one and force of tension two. So there's two tensions. Now they're going to be equal, but we still should label them. Way down the bottom, what we're going to get to, maybe not today, but tomorrow, is to actually calculate what that force of tension is. And we go about that a little bit differently. It's still Newton's second law. There's no changing to our physics concepts. It's how we're applying them. It's a little bit different. So I'm going to calculate the acceleration. I can't do anything unless I know what's positive and what's negative. So I'll just keep it the same as it was in our notes. And it doesn't matter. If one of you want to put the positive direction underneath the blue ball one, you're just going to get an answer that's the opposite sign that I do. So now, here's where you have to be careful, and I get a lot of questions, which is good, but I get a lot of questions about how do you know if something's positive or negative, and there's just a little trick to it. Once you label your forces and you put your arrowheads in, follow them. So if I'm looking at FG1, I follow its arrow, and it points to the negative sign. If I'm looking at FT1, and I follow its arrow, and I just follow it along the string, it points to the positive sign. So even though FT1 is off of the blue mass, right, the blue object, and it's on the other side of the pulley, its force points towards that positive direction. If we, you know, if we could look at it, it would help make this thing rotate clockwise. FT2, follow the arrow along the string, and it points down to the negative sign. FG2, follow the arrow, it points to the positive sign. So put your positive and negative sign Underneath, underneath the objects, underneath the forces, it might help you just get straight what's positive and what's negative. That's going to be really important here in a few minutes. So we have a new formula, which I didn't give you a chance to write down, but here it is. It's in your handbook. Sum of the forces equals the sum of the masses times the acceleration. So it's Newton's second law net force, and by definition, net force is add all the masses up, or excuse me, add all the forces up, equals the sum of the masses. So all the masses that are going to accelerate, you add them all up. Newton's second law treats it like it's just one object with a combined mass that's going to move. And because they're connected, the acceleration is the same for each of them. Now, this is really important, but we can only add forces 
that are moving um, along that string that are in the direction of motion. So we can only add forces that are in the direction the masses will move. Now, that's not going to be a problem for the question we're doing today and tomorrow, but there will be situations when we look at the other types of connected masses where you've got that trolley where this is going to be important. Okay, you're going to have more forces than in the problem that you have, than, uh, than you need. So let's I'm just going to sc scroll down and <clears throat> just going to write out what my formula says. Sum of all the forces. Well, there's Fg1. FG2, it doesn't matter what order you write them down. FT1, FT2. Those are all my forces. Some of the masses, I've only got two of them, times the acceleration. Net force equals mass times acceleration. We're just combining what the, the full mass is. When you're looking at all of the forces, the force of tension cannot be, in, in terms of magnitude, they cannot, it cannot be different from one side to the next. Its direction can be different. Right? The force of tension from mass 2 is pointing towards the negative sign. force of tension from mass 1 is pointing in the positive direction. So these two forces are equal and opposite. They're, they're equal and opposite. So they cancel out. One of them could be positive 50, the other is negative 50. So we can cross them right off. Right? They're the same magnitude, they point towards each other, opposite directions. So the problem simplifies a little bit because otherwise we, we don't have a method of getting our forces of tensions based on the information given. So it's Fg1 plus Fg2 equals M1 plus M2 times the acceleration. So let's put in what force of gravity is. You might have to review a little formula for it, but it's mass times 9.81. And this is where your signs are important, what's positive and what's negative. Fg1 is negative. It's mass, 6.5 times 9.81. So don't put the negative in with the 9.81. Just put it out in front. Make the entire force negative. You might get into a situation where you make a little mistake and you get a, two negative signs and they make a positive when they're not supposed to. Plus, Fg2 is positive, 13 times 9.81. Make that one a little better. That equals the two masses added up. Times the acceleration. And I'll just move this down. So again, the mathematics is not hard, but as you can tell, setting it up, that's different. You haven't had a problem like this before where you've had to set it up for yourself. Right? Label your forces. Apply Newton's second law. Put in positive and negative signs. Like I've seen the math you're doing down the hall. It's more complex math. I like to call this more complex thinking. But, you know, that's just me. I'm biased. Um, put, a, put in the numbers. I've got to calculate them. So six and a half times nine point eight one is negative sixty three point seven seven and thirteen. Should we just double that? Yep. One hundred and twenty seven five three. So these rows are all newtons. Two masses added up nineteen point five. That's kind of why we get an answer of one third the acceleration of gravity, because we're adding those masses up. Right? Remember when the simulation, one is half the other, the acceleration was a third. Well, if this was 1m and the other one was 2m, 1 plus 2 is 3. You're dividing by 3, or a, you're making it a third. So that's what's happening. Finish with the math. And this is still just the same 63.7. 
7. And divide both sides by the 19 and a half. And we get 3.27. Three point two seven. Take a second to make sure this problem makes sense. So the, the last part of this problem is to calculate the magnitude of the force of tension. Folks, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. We're just looking for the magnitude. So if you get an answer that's negative, it's fine. Just leave it. Nothing to worry about, guys. To if you start with the equation that we're, we're using for these problems, the sum of the forces is the sum of the masses times A, that's not going to work for us right? because the force of tension is equal and opposite. That force of tension is going to subtract off. We're not going to be left with a variable to solve for. We need to solve for the force of tension. The trick is, and it's kind of the power of Newton's laws, is you can apply Newton's laws to any problem. So the powerful thing with Newton's second law is that it can be applied to any object, be it multiple objects or one object. And that's what we're going to do. So take a look at mass one or mass two, and we're going to apply Newton's second law directly to that mass. Folks, not all of them. In order to solve for the acceleration, we need to incorporate all of the masses and how they're going to move. But the tensions subtract away. They canceled out, but to, to refocus on just one object. So let's take mass two. So to try and figure out force of tension, I'm going to analyze with Newton's second law, just object number two. I'm going to write that down down here. So we're going to do Newton's second law, apply it. Okay, apply Newton's second law to mass two. You could do it, it works for mass one, you're just going to get an opposite sign. Should my answer be positive or negative before we even start? No. no. Nice try with a guess though. Look at the direction force number two is pointing. Follow the string, it points to the negative sign. So when I do my Newton second law to calculate force of tension, just because I picked mass two and it's on the positive side of things, you have to look at the direction. That force vector arrow points along to the negative direction. That force of tension is trying to make this thing rotate counterclockwise or move to the left if you picture it horizontally. So Newton second law, sum of the forces equals M2 times the acceleration. Everything all right over here? It's kind of rude. So add up all the forces. Now here's the key. We're only looking at mass two. You're only looking at the second one. So we're only going to add forces that are acting on mass two. So it's Fg2 plus the force of tension on object two. Now it might seem like there's not enough information to solve it, but we know what force of gravity 2 is. We can calculate it. We know what mass 2 is, and we've just figured out acceleration again. So let's put our numbers in. Take into account our directions. Force of gravity 2, it's positive. I'm just going to emphasize that. Mass of 13, 9.81. Okay. This is the first time a force of gravity really has been positive because we've defined it that way. We've made the direction that way. Force of tension 2 is going to work out to be negative, but it's a vector, so you do not make it negative yet. It will work itself out. Okay. Mass 2 is 13. A is 3.27 meters per second squared. If A worked out to be negative, make sure you keep it negative. Right. The direction still matters. These are all vectors except for the mass. And now we can solve the equation. So on the left side, We've got our 13 times 9.81 again, 127.53. Plus our force of tension, 2. Don't know what it is yet. But the acceleration 
of that object times just that object's mass is the net force on mass 2, 13 times 3.27, 42.51. So just focusing on one mass, we're essentially calculating and working with the net force on that one mass. So the net force on each object can be different, and there's an overall net force to the entire problem. So Newton's second law, very powerful. We can look at an entire system with multiple masses, or you can focus on just one mass. Then we subtract this. Force tension 2 equals 42.51 minus 127.53. So that force, remember, force of tension 2 is the same as force of tension 1. And about negative, this one works out to be negative 85. I'll just keep two digits. So the magnitude of the force of tension is 85 newtons. That's what, if, you were, if you were holding on to this, that's what you'd feel. You'd feel a, a pull of 85 newtons on you. All right. 